Okay, we have our aftermarket 15606 crossover relief valve, and we're going to show you how to assemble it prior to installation. One of the things I mentioned during the installation is that Meyer recommends that all these pieces be dipped in oil prior to installation. One of the problems that we've come across uh, is it's very difficult to keep it assembled to install if it has oil all over it. We found that it's easier to assemble it dry and add a little lubrication uh, during the actual um, insertion into the cavity in the valve block. So let's get our parts out here. We'll lay them out for you. We've got nothing left in the bag. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So overall, there's fifteen pieces that is crossover relief valve assembly. It's not as scary as it looks. Um, there's nothing here that you're going to destroy by trying to put together as long as you take your time. And if you don't have it right, just start over again. It's, it's not something to stress out about. This is something that uh, a lot of people are very scared of replacing on their own. It's not a difficult thing to do. Just take your time. Um, you can download the service manual uh, from the Meyer website if you go to www.meyerproducts.com. Click on Service and Support. There will be a drop-down menu. Uh, click on uh, Service Installation Instructions. That will take you to another page. And then you can uh, click a drop-down menu and pick Hydraulic um, Units. And when you get to that page, um, you can scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll find the E47, E57, and E60 manuals, which has a whole section on just um, removing and replacing this crossover relief valve assembly. Meyer does not offer this multiple piece crossover relief valve assembly any longer. Um, they replaced it with a one piece already preset uh, crossover relief valve assembly where you would just remove your existing pieces, make sure that the block is empty, and then reinstall the one piece and you're done. There's no adjustments that you have to make or anything like that. Um, the part is uh, more than twice the price of this aftermarket uh, crossover relief valve. So, I'm going to try to do this from memory with the, so what the service manual tells you to do. The first, uh, one of the first steps is taking your poppet and putting your small nylon glide ring on. Make, you know, carefully put this on because so you don't want to stretch it out. It'll fit. It's snug. Okay. Then you have your barrel, as I call it. There's two O-rings here that look similar, but they're a little different. Um, the smaller of the two fits inside this cavity here. So you just press that into the cavity, make sure it's sitting nice and flat. Then you take your poppet with the glide ring on it and insert that into the center of the O-ring. And you bring it down so that the glide ring is making contact with the O-ring. Then you take your washer here. Um, it, it's got a lip on it. I don't know if you can see it. But you want the lip to face down towards, towards the barrel. When you slip this on, it's going to come in contact with the glide ring. What you want to do is evenly push, squeeze this together, push and squeeze. And what you're trying to do is push the glide ring into the center of the O-ring. Which if we back this off a little bit, you'll see that's exactly what we did. The glide ring is now centered in the O-ring and because we didn't put any oil on it, it's actually being held in place quite nicely. We don't have to worry about it coming apart when we go to assemble this to, in the, inside the unit. So when you look at our assembly video and you say, well, you know, they already had it assembled. This is the assembly. Those are the steps that we just took to assemble it. So we slip this washer on here. Now this piece is actually ready to be installed in the cavity. We would put our smaller of these three O-rings into the cavity and seat it in the bottom of the cavity. 
take our next O-ring and slip it over this. So it's just sitting on here loosely. We put a little oil on this now that it's assembled. And we can insert it into the cavity and drive it into place and then we would continue on. So we would have this piece, this O-ring, with this on the barrel, then this washer with the raised portion facing out would slip onto here, like so. Then our spring would go on up against the washer. Then this smooth barrel actually fits over the whole thing and makes contact there. And then we have our, our threaded piece. There's actually some pinholes that you can barely see in the smooth portion here in the uh, channel. There's a couple of pinholes that allow oil to flow outside here and keep it lubricated. There's our small disc that goes down inside of here. There's our adjusting screw that screws in here. This will be screwed into the cavity and hold the whole assembly in place. And then we have our acorn nut that actually has a notch cut in it, which we mentioned in the installation video. I don't know if you can see it better here. It allows oil to weep out past the O-ring. And having this lip on here, when you tighten this down against the, the block, it's going to bottom out and that's it. You don't want to over tighten it. So then we have our large O-ring that fits on here. And this will get screwed onto here once the assembly is inserted into the cavity. It's pretty simple. Start it all over again and show you. Pulling this apart, there's our glide ring on the poppet. There's our O-ring in this recession around the end of this poppet uh, barrel. So again, you just insert that in there. Use the washer with the raised portion facing in to push that glide ring into place in the center of the O-ring like so. That's the most difficult part because if there's oil on it, it keeps popping back out. That's all we need to cover. The rest of this is covered in the uh, installation of this crossover relief valve and we hope this makes it a little easier for you and it doesn't scare you. Because it's not something to be scared of, it's just follow the steps, a couple little tricks like not soaking everything in oil, making it a lot easier. As you can see, I still have powder on my hands because I was wearing the uh, nitrile gloves, but for this part I'm not even wearing gloves. So, there you have it.